uh, we're here at the St. Pete Boat Show with uh, Greg, what's your last name, Greg? Cutson. Cutson, Greg Cutson. And uh, we're here at the Mantis Anchor booth, and we're gonna, we've been shopping for an anchor, so we wanted to talk to Greg and kind of get a comparison of the anchors. So give us a little bit of your background. Uh, well, I am uh, a Russian Jew, an immigrant from Russia, and uh, became a doctor like my mother wanted me to. And uh, but always liked boating, and uh, finally I got a chance when I got out of my training, and uh, so I went sailing for a few years. And uh, in that time, I thought that the anchors uh, they're out there were inadequate. Um, although I was probably just ill-informed because the great rock men spade were they out. Um, anyway, so we tweaked with designs and finally came up with something we we think works a little bit better. And. Uh, so Mantis you Anchor actually were part of creating the design. Is this your one of your, your company that you've helped? Right, with? right. So I started Mantis Anchors in 2011, and uh, we finally got product in 2012, and uh, three years going. Great. Well, we're going to get a little tour of the anchors and the different products. So take us through your uh, demonstration and, and how you go through all the anchors. Yeah, so uh, what we have over here is display of some of the popular anchors out there. Um, this is a Delta, the Rock, and the Mantis. All anchors weigh about the same. Um, if we lay them on the side, when you drag the anchor along the side, um, <clears throat> what, what the bottom feels is that nose pressure. The, the weight on the nose it decides whether the anchor is going to bite or not. So if you could, uh, put your finger over here and feel what that feels like. Maybe I just come around on this side. Okay. okay. And then just around the table, compare it to the Rockna. And then do and then the same thing with us. Oh, it's definitely, yeah, you can feel the heavy right on the tip. You yeah. can feel the pressure. Um, so that translates in better performance in hot bottoms. You know, Arachna did a great thing in 2004 when they came out. There was uh, definitely a big improvement over what's out there. Um, we tweaked it further in really hard bottoms, and there's a thick layer of grass. Sometimes Arachna doesn't buy it where we do. The other thing that's different is that we're a bolted design. And the nice thing here about uh, being modular is that we have a lifetime warranty. So if you're in Tahiti, you bend your shank, we'll send you a replacement shank anywhere in the world on our time. So that's pretty much the story of the anchors. We have a... Is there anything with the... It looks like you have a sharper tip. Does that help with the penetration? Um, well, not sharper. The, ch the chisel here is undercut. And with us, we figured out through testing that in the really hard bottoms, if you have a chisel more akin to a wooden chisel, it actually works a little bit better. Um, it's actually opposite of this. This is curved under down. Yours is pointed down. Yeah. Right, right, right. The other thing that you might notice is if you take the anchor and just try to ride it, try to uh, see what it takes to take it, have it to come up, and try the same thing with ours. Oh yeah, just barely. The difference is more um, stark with the Delta. Try the same thing with the Delta. You it's really hard to get this guy off of, off of the bottom. Yeah, it's almost all the way up before it turns. Right, right. So this is almost like, I, I think of it as evolution tree of, uh, from, uh, from an ape to a man. Um, so definitely a huge improvement from a Delta to Rockne and then still a little bit. And is the, I mean this is all welded and you're bolted, is it just as strong between the two, the, right. the bolts? Now, notice we're still welded <coughs> to the boot. And then we're bolted. So the boot allows you, gives you a lot of diffusion of force. So you are not challenging the welded joint as much because the shank actually goes through the boot and gets welded from above and below. Mm -hmm. um, and then the shank is bolted. And each bolt, generally, the easiest way to explain it is each bolt on an anchor is stronger than the chain you would use with that anchor, and there are four bolts. So the joint is by no means a weak link. That's great. What other kind of, you know, I know you guys got some other products that you've got. Yeah, um, so this is our dinghy anchor. Um, it comes in uh, two versions, um, galvanized, um, galvanized version, which is all one piece welded. It's the same design. It's a minty, mini mantis. That's cool. Yeah, uh, it's the same design as uh, our papa, a mama anchor, uh, papa, mama, mama mantis, except that uh, we didn't put the roll bar on this one. Right. And the reason we didn't is because when you throw the anchor in the water, um, the anchor writes itself or falls correctly. So the roll bar rarely comes into play. <clears throat> so for a ding anchor, we thought it wasn't a must and a fit was a bigger priority. Um, the stainless steel version comes apart. Oh, okay. The, all our ding anchors come as a kit. They come with rope, nose protector, and uh, an offensive bag. 
So that's that. Then we come to our snubber, which is something we're proud of. You know, if you are somebody who has old chain road, you have to have a snubber because chain can't absorb the shock load. So let me just show you how that works. If you have a regular chain hook that you're using for your snubbing line, unless there's constant tension, the hook falls off. With a chain, with Mentos chain hook, you slide it down, lock, and uh, the hook tends to stay a lot better on the chain. And just for an extra protection, you could put the plastic gate. Some people like using gates, some people don't. Um, the, you know, if you use the gate, then obviously you need two hands to pop it off and then take it off. It's a little bit longer operation. Um, the hook stays pretty good even without it, but if you're really concerned about the hook falling off, you can put the gate on. Each Mantis chain hook is as strong as a high test chain of the same size. Yeah, that's thick. So, and then they're available in all sizes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> moving over here, uh, we have the Memphis Bridle. And uh, <clears throat> the cool thing about the bridle is that <clears throat> it's a really good value for a consumer. So, it's a 30 foot bridle that has shape protection integrated in it. This is the boat end. So, we have two loops. They go to your boat. It's a 30 foot length bridle that gets spliced into a common stock and then you would connect one of our hooks to it and that would be the bridle for your boat. What we include with it is a carabiner and the idea of the carabiner is that in, if you're coming up to a mooring instead of uh, you're not going to be anchoring so you know that you're coming to pick up a mooring boat then you would just <clears throat> attach a carabiner, the uh, shackle to the to the end of the bridle, and you can pick up your mooring bolt real easy. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Moving on. <clears throat> so, swivels. Swivels oh, usually. Swivels that. usually. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, swivels usually get a better wrap. Um, and the reason they do is because one they get side loaded so if you put a swivel on um, um, you know it's really easy to see how it would fail because if, if a swivel gets side loaded let me just put the pin in or make it easier um, that's how they fail yeah and then it's really hard to size a swivel to be as strong as a high test chain of the same size so what we did is women swivel and design it around the shackle. So you can't possibly side load it. The shackle, the shackle is a hex head with a hole through it. So you can still safety wire it. And if it gets really hard to undo, you could put a sucker wrench to take the bolt off. Mm -hmm. And then this swivels. Yep, and this is a swiveling end. If we take this collar off, then you will see the insides of the swivel. The pin is oblong to allow maximum strength, and this swivel is sized to be strong enough for G7 chain. And then the, the collar creates, protects this area here where that's like a normal swivel, but this creates an extra outside to it. Correct. Let me, uh, let me just talk about the collar. Let me just take the swivel apart, and we'll just go through the interior of this thing, look through the guts. The reason we make it really easy to take apart is because we want you to be able to service the swivel. Say you anchor for two months at a time, barnacles grow. If you want to open it and service it, make it really easy to close it. You put the pin, be careful not to drop the pin. Slide the collar on. And two, pe two pieces of safety wire is what holds it all together. The safety wire is provided in the kit. And when you put the shackle on, we offer, obviously we ask you to use safety wire of the shackle as well. And then what you get. So the swivel is sized to be as strong as a high test, is properly properly sized. Um, it's stronger than a high test chain of the same size with a proper safety factor. So it's the strongest swivel on the market. It cannot get side loaded. And the pricing is really reasonable. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. That that's pretty much all of Well, no, we can keep on going. We have, uh, <laughs> what, well, what we have over here is um, maybe we should go to this unit. Well, no. Um, um, what we have over here is anchor mate, and if you come around this way, you will see the unit a little better. And anchor mate is 
an attachment to any existing bow roller that allows you to fit your anchor. New generation anchors sometimes have thin shanks and a, and a lot of big and, and big flukes with that have a lot of mass. So they wobble quite a bit. And to secure them, we developed a device that universally fits any anchor and any bow roller. So basically it goes on the same bolt that holds a plastic roller. The bolt just needs to be a little bit bigger. You sandwich anchor made on, and it's an adjustable unit. This bolt moves in the slot to put an anchor mate in your custom position, and then you back up on it, <coughs> hold the anchor in place. There's a, is there, this is a, oh, I think it's just a reflection. That's neat. The, um, and then we delve into some fun stuff. <coughs> and thank you for spending your time on going through all the products. It's, uh, <laughs> Um, I didn't realize you had this many different things. I just figured it was just the anchor and then I, th I know you had the hook, but I didn't realize you developed the other two. Yeah, pieces. well, we just keep on using the boat and there's a problem to solve. We try to solve. Maybe we get carried away a little bit. This is a deck fill key, universal deck fill key. It opens, opens all kinds of uh, deck fill lids. So if it has two sizes of pins. It has a square for the star shape has a slot and then also opens the shackles. Oh, okay. So it's a beefy tool. It's a 316 stainless steel casting. Kind of a tool for life. Just don't drop in the water. Imagine every uh, fuel dock employee needs to have one of those in their pocket. They can it's open up anything. That. They're one of our biggest customers. Yeah. Um, these are clamps. If you have a project where you're trying to mount something to the rail, we wanted to make it super simple and not have to use a reliant screws. So you would pop it on and clamp it. So it's a cam clamp with a pad to mount things, projects that people usually use this for are a fillet table, a solar panel, mounting electronics. It interfaces with a rem mount and it's available in 7 8 1 inch and 1 and a quarter. And the material is nylon reinforced with fiberglass. Yeah, we've had some friends that have put the solar panels on their side rail where they can move them up and down, and they had to kind of do a custom, figure out, you use something system. else to do that. Right. So they could, I could see how that would work really well. Um, and here we integrate, into the clamp, we integrate a light. Okay. So this is a cockpit light. Um, it's a soft color. Amb so for, for ambience, uh, Korea LEDs. Um, the light has three settings, bright, less bright, and yet less bright. And then it has a setting for SOS signal. Hopefully we'll never have to use it. And then it has a red light for reading your charts at night. And then you can make that red light blink. And that way it's a nice way to find your boat in Anchorage at night. <laughs> Uh, the red, the indicator here shows if it's green. It shows you the light is charged. When you need to charge the light, it lets you know by starting blinking in the red. It takes three and a half hours to charge, and depending on the setting, you get anywhere from 16 hours to 100 hours of lighting, depending on what level you're using. This is a USB um, charger. You could charge it via like a regular micro USB phone charger and you can charge your devices off of it as well. It's IPX5 water resistant, so you can leave it outside and not worry about it, and it comes with a three year warranty. It mounts to the rail with the same clamp that we just talked about. And that's it. Great, well, thank you, appreciate Steve, it. Thank you so much for dropping by. Absolutely.